Hi everyone, my name is James Ivey with McDSP. You find me today in the heart of Matrix Studios in West London. I'm here with Sean Barrett, AKA Hypertone, and we've been playing with the APBs, haven't we? Yes, we have. They're a bit special, aren't they? They are special and they sound incredible. So tell us a little bit about the track. Um, uh, you're the artist, aren't you? I am. I mean, most people know me as a producer, songwriter, engineer and stuff, but I also do write my own songs and have my own music. Um, this is a track that um, I produced. Um, I'm the featured artist, I'm singing on it, but I also produced it with a great producer called RP9 Productions. Um, we worked on it just off the cuff, like we wasn't expecting to make a song, but we were doing something else, worked on, came up with this and the rest is history. Some of the best tracks have, always, have started out in similar ways. So we're gonna show you around the session, um, talk a little bit about how Sean's been using not just the Muex mixer, but some of the other plugins in the kind of the pre-production phase. Is that fair um, enough to say? Yeah, we pre-mix. Yeah, pre-mix, yeah, that, that'll do. Yeah. Should we dive in? Yeah, let's dive in. Let's do it. So let's start with the most important part of the track. And if you don't think it is, then you're just wrong, the lead vocal. It's always the lead vocal. It sells the record. So I'm using the chicken head compressor um, on the lead vocal here and it's just really um, adding a bit of depth, just a little bit of compression and the source button engaged because just just use it. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> needs secret source. Yeah, just, just use the source button, can't tell you what it does, but it sounds uh, phenomenal. So just a bit of that, just to make it sound a little bit sweeter and just to you know pull in a bit of the dynamics. It's not a lot, you'll see it's not a lot of gain reduction, but it just really adds something really, really nice. You've been around every city and town that I go, oh. But there's a difference in distance whenever I call on your phone, oh. Every now and then you let your head down, what you're trying to say now, I really want to know. It's doing way more than just compression, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's making it sound a lot richer, a lot more full. Um, it just gives it like a little bit of gloss. Um, that's what I, that's what I've been using it for anyway. It gives it that nice kind of um, polish and that that kind of lower mid realism that you get from like a really 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 good mic or a really good singer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got the Muex mixer and I've used a bit of saturation just to add a little bit of um, a little bit of grit to the lead vocal. I'm gonna play it, but I'm using the mixer actually to um, adjust the level and the balance of the overall mix. So when I disengage it, the level will drop, but you'll still be able to hear the difference. You've been around every city and town that I go, oh. But this is a difference in distance whenever I call on your phone, oh. Every now and then you let your head down, what you trying to say now, I really wanna know. Do you see what I see? Cause you seem to be feeling low. So again, it's just adding that extra layer of harmonics, richness. It really makes the vocal sort of stand out without being super loud. It's mm. it's almost like you're putting it through some kind of analog processing, well, isn't it? We are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> it just it really gives it a very very nice polish. That's mm. that's the best way I can describe it. You're not slamming it. You're not driving it for that distorted. No. Set. You want you want the extra harmonics, the richness, but you're not yeah. slamming it. You're not going all the way to distortion. The you're thing going to... I really love about the APB, like real hardware, if you push it really hard it will respond really hard in terms of distortion so if you want like it really crunchy if you want to use it more as an effect you can do that just by whacking the knob all the way up but just using it subtly in the mix really adds to the flavor and and with some plugins you've got to turn up a lot before you hear anything with this just a little bit is is great let's have a listen to some drums but not the bottom end not the thumpy stuff just the actual the, yeah. the percussive stuff if you like so i've got this channel with the um drums on and what I've done on the Muex, I've used um, a bit of saturation. Now that doesn't look like a lot, but for this, that, that is a lot. And a bit of low end EQ with some, some compression. And I'll give it a playback. So again, it's really just, you know, rounding those transients out a little bit, getting me a little bit of more of the reverb tails and some of the effects and things like that. It, it just, it bring, just brings it out um, a lot more. It gave me a nice sound. Makes the hi-hat sound a little bit fuzzy, which I really, really like as well. In a, 
exactly what you'd expect from an analog compressor on a hi-hat yeah. kind of way. <laughs> Let's have a listen to the kick drum and see what's going on there. Yeah, so on the kick drum, we're using some saturation again, just to make it a little bit more thumpy. It just brings out the, um, the transit, the actual smack of the kick. It brings out that sound a little bit. It just gives it a nice round sound, but it's also the, the punch of the kick really kind of comes through. So you can see, actually, you know, you are using it like a proper analog console. You're driving yeah. it quite hard. I mean, if you play back for me, you can see that your master mix, your master channels are going. Let your head down, what you're trying to say now, I really want to know. Do you see what I see? Cause you seem to be feeling low. Let me take you back inside the coop Top down, lose the roof On that leather, icy blue We gon' hold them W's No L's, can't you tell You with me were living well So tell me, baby, what you gonna choose But that's my point of So what's your overall impression of all things APB, analog processing box and all that sort of stuff? My impression and my overall thoughts are it sounds really, really good and that's the main thing with audio is how it sounds. It sounds incredible. It brings a lot of gear into a semi-portable form factor. If you've got it in a flight case, you can take it with you to a studio or wherever you're working from, open up your mix and you're ready to go. That, you know, the modern way of working, recallability, all of those are great factors. To know that I can just save this, come away, come back, open it, and everything be exactly the same is amazing, especially if you're used to using analog gear where you have to manually recall it. It just means that we can just work so much more um, effectively, you know, we can get more done. I mean, obviously there are limiting factors. If you're used to mixing 100% in the box, of course, there's um, you do have to bounce in real time. Mm -hmm. Say so to me, it's not, a, it's not a deal breaker. Obviously there is a hardware dongle these days. Yes. <laughs> but you've got, say to me, the the pros way outweigh the cons. Yeah, they do, they really do. Because again, it's you're getting that analog sound without all the headache of patch bays, routing, if you want to use this bit of gear, bringing that in. Because there's several different um, you know, plug-in offerings they, they have on the APB system. You can just plug in one box and you're good to go. Um, so if you're um, a mixer who likes portability, likes the modern way of working, it's just, it's fantastic. So if you're interested, we've got an APB 16 and an 8 down there, which is potentially giving us 24 channels, 24 mono channels, 12 stereo channels. But we're actually only using... Um, I think we're using seven? Seven stereo seven, yeah. pairs and the master. And, and the master so, yeah. so effectively 16 channels. So you could have mm -hmm. done this all on the APB 16, which is quite cool. I think what's interesting is, although you are using so for the kicks and for the BVs, you're driving the desk, the virtual desk, quite mm -hmm. hard. Nothing's being slammed. Mm -hmm. Nothing's really being hit hard. But you're getting a very, oh, I suppose it's almost like console-driven sound. Mm -hmm. Almost kind of um, valve loveliness yeah. in a digital stroke analog form yeah. factor. It's a, it, it does mess with your brain somewhat, doesn't it? It does. It's, it's exactly exactly how you said it. It's like having a console in a box. <laughs> it's just that having a console and having all those great nuances of a console without leaving it on all the time and having constant air conditioning and bits dying from our feet. <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've all experienced um, the, 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 um, the experience of having a console or using a console long term. It's like having the best of both worlds, all the sound and none of the headache. Thank you so much for having us today. It's been an absolute pleasure and for showing us your workflow. Thank you so much. So I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. My name's James Ivey and I'll see you again very soon. Do you see what I see? Cause you seem to be feeling low. Oh, let me take you back inside the coop. Top down, lose the roof. On that leather, icy blue. We gon' hold them W's. No L's, can't you tell? You with me living well.